fight over the future of TikTok is now headed to court. Fox Act legal analyst Wendy Patrick joining us in studio to explain it all. <laughs> I know people are concerned about this. TikTok and its parent company now suing the U.S. Tell us a little bit about this. Well, Charlotte, people are concerned about it because everybody uses it. Uh, everybody uses it from the man on the street, as we used to say, to the man in the White House. I mean, and everybody in between. We just had that big segment about Michael Cohen using it in right. advance of his testimony. Um, so basically, the lawsuit says it's being unfairly singled out, and that's a violation of the First Amendment because everybody should have access to information. Now, the president signed this as part of a larger bill, but, you know, the, the broader concern here is that can we regulate ownership of a company like this? I mean, TikTok has a billion users. That's a billion with a B. And so they have these this nine months to divest or get banned. But TikTok says, you know, in ByteDance, the parent company, we have no plans to do so. Yep. Uh, we will not be pressured into doing so, which would mean it stops functioning next year if, in fact, this law is not stopped. So that's basically what yeah. you're looking at now. Is there going to be some kind of an injunction preventing uh, this platform from being banned? It's interesting whether or not the U.S. can even do that because what TikTok is saying that that's unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. Is it? Well, unprecedented means unpredictable. Is it unconstitutional unless you have a very good reason for it? There's a balancing of interests. Right. What makes this different is the, the government is alleging there's a national security concern. But, you know, just like any good lawyer would say, prove it. And that's part of the, the problem here is how do we know how many people, at least that's the argument. We can all imagine lots of apps track us. We the all CEO know this. was in front of Congress, though. That that's right. That didn't apparently turn out too well. Because... No, and you know, not a lot of people know about that rule. I mean, the three of us watched it. Our, our, our viewers may have watched yeah. it. But not a lot of people even, even know that occurred where there actually was this congressional testimony. And then what did it show? What did it prove? And can whatever came out of that hearing be used to actually sure. ban a single platform? You know, I know people that won't download apps because everybody knows mm. apps track Tra us. You know, yeah. I mean, that we all go to our computers, whatever we've just talked about in another room, somehow mm -hmm. we have an app for it on the computer. I'm not sure how that works. But the bottom line is to single out this company, uh, divest or be banned, they're arguing is not fair. But, but they're singling out this company because of concerns, right? But what concerns? That's the question, is they want to know if, if it's a national security risk. And if it's at a national security risk at such a level that this is actually going to be necessary to be part of a ban with bipartisan support, mind you, which no. distinguishes it from other bans, can you have some sort of, of, of evidence to support it? Because that's what a court's going to say. Mm -hmm. If a court's going to balance the equities, balance the interests, sure. they're going to want to know exactly what those are. Let's talk about the court, given what's going to happen, yeah. <laughs> what's going to happen over the next, you know, weeks and months. What could be the possible outcomes of this? The possible outcomes could be that a lower court makes whatever decision it makes. I'm going to, you know, um, put this on hold or I'm going to let it proceed, which will then be appealed, no doubt, to the U.S. Supreme Court. And why wouldn't the U.S. Supreme Court look at something like this? If you have a law that's unprecedented, it's never been tried before, mm -hmm. it only singles out one company right. um, that everybody uses, wouldn't that provide the justification for this being the kind of case that it would consider. I think everybody hopes that it does. I mean, yeah. I think this is another bipartisan support is if you do have something that presents such a risk, so to speak, why shouldn't it be decided by the highest court in the land? Let's talk bigger picture here. Assuming this does happen, what are the wider ramifications here in terms of more lawsuits and what's to stop them from going after every, you know, to follow the trail of money and, uh, well, mm -hmm. you're connected to this country, you're connected to that. There are investors from all over the world in every app imaginable. What is to stop them from them moving on to the next? On You'd to the next? need to show, there, there's a unique danger, so they argue, with this being Chinese sure. ownership. Yeah. That's different than maybe it's owned by Canada. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a very different argument that they yeah. make national security wise here. You would need to have a similar argument that, you know, another country um, that maybe we have some animosity towards or there's a concern that they may be yeah. invading our privacy in the same way would be also uh, forced to divest. I don't know whether they can point to another company sure. right now, but if they could, it would be the same argument. But I know what you mean. In the law, we don't like what we call slippery slopes. If, in fact, they are allowed to uniquely ban this platform yeah. that is so popular, 
could that then be used as an argument to ban other platforms that maybe have some more of a tenuous connection mm -hmm. with a country like that? Can we go back to that congressional hearing where they kept asking the CEO guy, mm -hmm. the business right. guy, uh, are you Chinese communist government, this, that? And the guy's like, I'm from Singapore. I'm not right. a yeah, the CEO's from Singapore, but the company itself, ByteDance, whoever owns TikTok, is chi a Chinese company. And then they tie and it to the government. Right. It's always tied to the government in the end. And then, you know, the counter argument to that would be, well, is it everything going to right. then be tied to some governmental agency that has some sure. roundabout connection with the Chinese government? And is that then going to be a rationale <laughs> yeah. for banning a platform that is this popular? You know, you talk bigger picture. But in picture. China, most things are. I mean, that state government yeah. runs everything. And, you know, you talk big picture. Can we get any bigger of a platform <laughs> TikTok. TikTok. Oh my God. I mean, uh, so the stakes are so high that that again would be another argument that this ugh. should be decided by the highest court in the land if this is allowed to proceed. Wendy Patrick. Yeah, so I'm sure we'll be talking about I, this again as the longest. Listen, the I don't even it. understand TikTok. I have it because my kids got it. And, 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 and what am I scrolling through here? What am I looking at here? <laughs> right. You said everybody's on it. I'm not on it. Are you on it? I have it. I'm not either. But I'm not I don't. <laughs> Everybody else, most people that most have people, a platform yeah. and something to sell and sure. something to say are on TikTok. I That's a whole other discussion with the business uh, and everything else. There you go. Patrick, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Good to see you.